Okay, everybody, welcome back. Uh, again, I'm Tyler Johnson. Uh, this is going to be part three of the grinder and box build. Uh, like I uh, said when I left, I was going to get stuff painted up and get ready and get this sub assembly done, which I have uh, been successful in doing. So, what we're going to do is, is I'm just going to kind of walk through some of the parts that I collected to get uh, the rest of the build going. I'm hoping that this is going to be the second to the last video. I'm thinking I'm going to have to push this to number four. I did make a decision on my motor and on my controller. I, I received the motor already. I'm still waiting for the controller and I will go over that in this video. So what we're going to do is I'm going to try to get in the, the camera in and take some close-up pictures of all the parts I've got laid out and we'll go over a parts list real quick and we'll move on and just start putting some together and some layout things and some other little tricks that I found on some of the forums that we're going to incorporate to kind of make this a better grinder uh, from everything I've read and, and all the reactions to adding some different things for the uh, idler arm. It was a pretty nice deal, so we're going to go ahead and incorporate that. So, I hope you enjoy the video, guys. We'll get started. Okay, so here's the sub-assembly. We talked about the motor sub-assembly. We've got the upright and the motor base plate all attached together with the bolts, and I also welded it. Did three nice welds on each side. As good as I can do. I'm not uh, the greatest welder, but I'm working on that. And uh, it's all painted. It's ready to go. We're looking good on that. And then this is uh, the rest of the parts. I've got most of these painted and ready to go. We'll go through all these parts. Uh, there is some some stuff that isn't finished yet. We still have a little fab work to do on the idler arm and uh, on one of these spacers here. That's why it's not painted, and I'll explain that later. It has to do with uh, adding a gas shock system to the idler arm for our tensioner. So I, I'm really uh, pleased with the way that looks on the stuff I found online. But in the meantime, like I said, we still have a little little something to do with this, but I just wanted to go over some of the hardware that we're going to be using. Um, I'm going to start with, obviously, the, the base plate. That used four one-inch quarter 20. I use socket cap screws similar to these. But like I said in the other video, you can use you can use your your countersink screws as well. It just depends on what flavor we're going to go with. Is we're going to talk about how we're going to attach our our upright. This is our idle arm upright, and it goes along with these two spacers right here. And again, if you look on Jamie's website, PolarBearForge.com, he does have an assembly page, and this is where I'm getting all my info along with some of the stuff I'm finding on the on the boards, on the forums. But those are all going to be attached with 3 8 by 16 uh, bolts. Those are, I forgot what length they are off the top of my head. Let me measure them. They're a nice fit, so I'm happy with it. So they're 2 and a half inch, 3 8 by 16, by uh, 16s. And I use the button heads in this case. Again, it's just for a look thing for me. I like it. You don't have to do it that way. You can use uh, save a little bit of money and go with regular bolts. That's that's not an issue at all. The next thing we're going to need is, is how we're going to attach all these uprights for the tool arm pockets and the spacers. And, and for that, I'm going to use, it takes a quarter 20, it's a quarter 20 hole or a quarter inch hole, and I'm using quarter 20 screws, and I'm going to use socket cap screws. And it's going to take uh, eight of the quarter 20 by by 3 inch and it's going to take 4 quarter 20 by 3 and a half inch. These are a little long just because I couldn't find 3 inch so I'm going to cut them down once I get them all installed and looking where I want them to be but that's what you're going to need so you need 8 of the 3 inch quarters quarter 20 and you need 4 of the 3 and a halfs. Um, double check your measurements before you buy all this stuff Make sure you're getting what you want. The next thing we'll talk about is is, is the the tool um, the tooling handles to lock down your arms. I found these; these are adjustable, so they can they they will rotate. So they can be put in any position once you get your tool arm locked down. Um, they are uh, five sixteenths by eighteen, and that's what we ended up threading our middle bolt hole on that is with a 5 16 18 and that's where these guys go so all of these have been threaded up you don't need all three to be threaded but I went ahead and did it just in case I decide to put uh, one of these arms on the other on the opposite side 
So it just gives me a little more freedom and I'd hate to have it not done if I really wanted to use it that way once the whole tool is put together. I, I forgot to mention on all of these, I'm going to be using nylock, um, nylock nuts. That's just, as you guys Probably most of you know what nylocks do for you. This is this is a machine that's going to be inducing vibration. So this nylock will help you with not backing your bolt your your uh, nuts off of your bolts, and uh, it'll make it a little more secure. Uh, you can, and then I'm going to be using obviously the appropriate size washers as well. One little trick that I'd like to show you guys. I don't know if everybody knows this is a trick I learned from a fabricator friend of mine years ago. Uh, it's a great trick, and it's it's just how to make a. Um, your washer and your bolt fit a little cleaner. So if you're going to get, let's say you're going to get a quarter 20 bolt like this and you pick up a handful of quarter washers, what you're going to run into is, is the, the quarter washer is always a little bigger. So you get a lot of slop. So what I like to do on all my washers is I step a size down. This is a number 12 washer and as you can see it fits very precisely on that quarter inch shank. So you get really nice clean fit and it doesn't look sloppy at all like you would get if you used a quarter inch washer it would be very loose on there. And I do that with all of my fasteners. So if I need if I need a 3 8 inch, I just step down to a 5 16 and so on and so forth. And you just keep stepping down one one level of washer for each uh, for each size screw that or bolt that you're using and it makes it really nice and clean. All right, we also have, uh, this This one's just an example. I've got another one on order. It, I, this isn't long enough, and this is what is going to be your adjuster for your tracking. And we went ahead and we, we tapped this out at quarter 20, and so that just fits in there. Like I said, I do have another one coming that will fit better, and that's what's going to deal with your, your tracking device for your tracking wheel. And this, this part isn't fabricated yet. I'm going to be doing that uh, in the next... Part of the video so we'll get on that later um, we've got we've got the spring that we're going to use and I'm going to do a combination of a spring and a gas shock on this but this is a 20 pound spring it's a 55 64 by eight and a half um, it is like I said 20 pounds and I'm also I think I'm going to incorporate some of these little links to actually attach it to the eye bolts and these are quarter 20 eye bolts inch long and they're going to one's going to fit on the back of this idle arm and then one is going to be in the back of the main upright on the subassembly and we'll deal with that in a minute then I have my handle and this handle is going to actually fit here I actually got a little too big of a handle I went I got half inch uh, without a without a stud uh, so I'm going to go ahead and just I'm going to bring this hole out to a half inch and we'll install that handle. It'll be a pretty easy deal and it'll, I think it'll look nice and clean. And then we come to our gas shock. Okay, I got the gas shock set up with the, with the mounts from McMaster Car. I found it on, on the blade forums. I will uh, get it posted with all the part numbers that you need and I'll credit it appropriately, obviously, uh, from, I forget, uh, his name right off the top of my head, but I will credit it appropriately and throw the link up so you guys can see who who's kind of responsible for coming up with this idea and all the part numbers to make it easy to order. And then, like I showed you in some of the other videos, we're gonna we're gonna try this half inch shoulder bolt to uh, attach our idler arm to the idler upright and see just see how this works. If this doesn't end up working out and I don't like it, I'll just switch it out to a regular half inch threaded uh, bolt and we'll just go from there but I, I think this might work good I may have to adjust the the length a little bit because I am going to run a washer in between the upright and the idler arm just to make it so it's not grabbing on the paint and it, it just will smooth it out a little better um, you're also going to need your 3 8 by 16 I got I ended up with one inch bolts for your for your motor to mount your motor onto the plate here I got one inch like I said one and a quarter might might be a little a, a little more bolt a uh, little more thread in that uh, motor plate or the motor mount but it's it's only going to go so far you don't want to go anything over an inch and a quarter because then you'll just bottom it out and you won't be able to tighten it all the way down 
I ended up ordering a motor accidentally did not get the motor with the rigid base plate on it that would bolt down here as well I wasn't paying attention when I ordered my motor I got really excited because it was like a hundred dollars less than what I've been seeing elsewhere and I just didn't realize I clicked on the the non mount or non base mount motors so I received just a motor that mounts right here I don't think it's going to be a big deal I think I'm going to roll with it. it it attaches nice I've already tested it out and I'll give you the specs on that motor here later in the video as well so that's uh, that's about it for now there are some other there are some other uh, fasteners that we need to deal with that I haven't talked about yet like I said I want to get a comprehensive list together but uh, it's taken a little more time than I thought and uh, we'll get we'll get that up as soon as we can and uh, we'll be right back and we'll move on to the next part of the next phase of this construction okay well I think I pretty much covered all the important parts of the construction we're going to start constructing the rest of this grinder. I do need to put. I did put it together. I'll I'll show a picture. I did do a, a temporary assembly to do the layout for this gas shock. So that allowed me. And like I said, I'll show the picture of it. I was able to get the right dimensions that I needed to get this laid out right, so we can fabricate fabricate this stuff up. Because what I'm going to have to do is drill and tap for these brackets here and here. On this we're going to have to use a three quarter inch quarter twenty and I'll just go with the same thing on this we'll go a three quarter inch quarter twenty. I'm going to use a button head on on this to attach it down and this kit these mounts you buy them separately from the shock they do come with uh, nylocks and a bolt as well as the appropriate spacer for what you need. So it has everything you need in there to get to get this all hooked up and I, I want to say the whole thing was probably about 25 bucks it's a 20 pound shock so when you couple the 20 pound shock with a 20 pound spring I'm gonna have I'm gonna have a good amount of force that is gonna be pulling up on, or pushing up on that belt and hopefully that'll keep the tracking nice for us because that's a big thing with any of these grinders is, is what I'm finding out is is maintaining your tracking so what we'll do is we'll start we'll start uh, getting this fabricated up so we can start putting all this together. Uh, I'm not going to show you guys tapping and drilling all this. You already know how to do it at this point. We've already gone through that. So I'll get that done. And when I get back, have this painted, we'll start putting this together. All right, we'll see you in a bit.